So before we get the ball rolling, I just had to show you guys this video. It's too good, guys. It's too cringy. I love it. Let's take it to the tape. I don't. Hey, I didn't see that. Look at Uriah. You see Uriah there? You see Uriah laughing? Serious? Are you the players? You're good, good, good to go now, huh? Yeah. Say it. Look. Did you want to bend the knee at one time? Because I think you absolutely suck. Look at his eyes. What do you weigh? <laughs> what do you weigh? No one, no one takes that dude serious. <laughs> Look, he's laughing. Everybody's laughing over there. Not even like, not even taking that serious. And you know what's crazy about that whole situation? It was actually on the spot. I just thought, I was like, you know what? I did have a couple of dreams. I wasn't drunk. I never, you know, maybe a little high. But I was, uh, you know, I was just more like a dare. I'm like, well, hold on. This guy here, I just saw him fight. And I don't think he's good. I really don't. I really don't think he's good. So I just decided to make uh, an ordeal out of it. So Sean O'Malley, you're welcome. Next! What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And you guys, welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback, where I'll be dissecting the one and only Sean O'Malley, a.k.a. Sean O'Smelly. I'm dissecting Sean O'Malley because a lot of beginning hit up by all you fans. Like, what is it? How is it that he's going to end up being a veteran in Peter Young? I'm dissecting his distance game. I am going to be sharing the technique, the tactics that Sean O'Malley is going to have to do to make that transition to beat a guy like Peter Young. For Peter Young, I'm going to see a lot of, I'm going to dissect him too. Watch and see of a lot of his entries and how that he's going to be able to defend if any takedown comes from Sean O'Malley. Enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. Alrighty, now here we have none other than Sean O'Smelly, aka Krusty the Clown, against Eddie Wyland. Eddie Wyland was a former WEC champ from, man, I guess the early 2000s in reality. But, you know, uh, how, is it, yeah, 35 is my age. Probably a little older. This is about a year ago, I think. Anyway, size difference 5'11, 72 inch reach. He's got two inches above what Corey Sanhagen has. Um, anyways, let's dissect this. Yeah, so right away, this is uh, round one. Look at this. Right away, I'm already noticing, like, look, his movements. He's, he is giving this man distance. And one thing I will say about Sean O'Malley is he does understand that distance game. Look at how far, look at how far he is from, like, he's right in range. Even those little movements that he's doing there, like, he's just, he's making things unpredictable for a guy like that. Like, this dude's having fun. You know, and, and, and look, look at how low his hands are. And they're like, oop, nice kick by Sean. His distance is on point. Unnecessary kick. And those are things that could possibly get him in trouble, but he finds these different... Sean O'Malley's greatest gifts are his fakes and his feints. Watch. Throws the, the, the slight little uppercut to eventually come back with that overhand. That's what makes a kid like this good. I'm not saying great, but that's what makes a kid like this good in the striking department. And here we have, uh, you know, Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida. This was this was a fight that was prior. This guy had a big hyper behind him, but at that time he already been knocked out by uh, by uh, Cody Garbrandt, uh, 5'7", 5'11". I mean, a little older. I don't even I don't even know if he's still in the UFC. You know what happens a lot of times when you end up getting knocked out or X, Y, and Z, they just you don't see these guys again. You know? Yeah, again, same thing. Same thing. This dude's right away giving them distance. Right away. When I'm saying giving them distances, he's keep he, he, he's at he's at his dispense. He's at his, he's at his range. Good job with the leg kicks. Front kicks are front kick yep, fakes. Like you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when Sean fakes. He's trying to see if he can cover distance, and if you stay, he'll throw, and if you move back, he won't do anything. Yep, he'll catch you coming into his fight zone, he'll end up throwing his hands. Ooh, caught him with that kick. Ugh, come on, I, I think that's crazy. Like, these dudes, boom, right. The fact that he threw that left hand and then caught him with that left kick, you know, he's creative, dude, I will give him that. But this dude, I'm just like, come on, man, get up. Yeah, if you don't want, I don't think you want to be doing those type of kicks with Piotr. You know, now he's having fun. 
the more this dude could have fun and the more these guys could give him space, the more that this guy's gonna have success. Yo, kick. Yeah, this is just breaking. Okay, yeah, it was that left hand that caught him, but some people just don't want to be in this game, you know? Some people just do not want to be in this game, you know? You know, kudos to him, though. He's, he's catching people slipping. He's picking the right opponents. And here we have it. This, this is the fight. This is the fight that I really want to show you guys because as much as, and I don't even think Cheeto was uh, new when he had him hurt. And it's crazy because you do have to be a shark. You got to be like a dog on a bone whenever it is that somebody's hurt because you have to capitalize on these positions. But here we have it. Oh, he's only 5'8". Yeah, he, see, he's always going to overtower everybody. God, God, these crazy reach though. You know, 27, 25. Yeah. Giving them range again. I remember this fight. It's been a minute, but he was having success early. Yep, already, yep, exactly what you want to do. Keeping him at range, up kick it there. Boom, that was the first one. Look, right away he switched stance. Right away, when you see somebody, when, yep, yep, losing control here. Losing control because, yep, you see? And it wasn't a crazy kick too. And this dude, it's crazy that this dude doesn't realize what's going on here, you know? Happened to me before. Bent the knee. Yep, bent it. You don't, you can't, you, you almost, when you're hurt like that, you almost gotta be a little more grounded. Look at this, look at this. And I keep rolling it. So, you know, you got, you get hit in the peroneal nerve. The difference is with me and Sean O'Malley is the fact that I was able to go five rounds and win against, hit the pause button. I was able to go five rounds and win against a guy like Demetrius Johnson in a, in a title fight against a guy who had 11 tile defenses. And this is, what I, this is what I want to tell you about Sean O'Malley. Does he really have the grit? You can give it, but can you take it? Because if you can give it and you can take it, then you know, you're a whole nother fighter. But if you can just give it, but when it's given to you, you'll break. And that's the biggest thing that I see in this fight. Boom. Yeah, he's just, he doesn't want none. And there wasn't that many kicks too. But look, come on, man. Really? Yeah, this is a fight, bro. There's kicks involved. There's things like that. So this is this is where I see Sean's biggest hole. Sean's big, biggest hole, number one, I'm gonna say his position. He's too wide on his stance. Number two, I'm gonna say his grit. Does he have the tenacity? Does he have that? That brute strength to be able to give it, but also take it. And that's why I really question him. All right, now here we have, you know, you're only as good as your last fight. And I'll be quite honest with you, I wasn't impressed with this dude. And really, this is a lot similar to what he's gonna be going up against. Peter Young is a 5'7", and this dude's here. But anyway, let's cut to the chase. Yep, right away, right away, beginning of the fight, giving him distance. Letting him play his game. Faking. Boom. Faked and went kick, which is cool. You don't always have to throw punches. Boom. Boom. Yep. He knows. He knows whenever it is that he's going to go. So if he gets him to pause, he'll throw. But if he gets him to go back, then he won't do anything. You see what I'm saying? He went back, didn't do anything. If he stays, he's throwing. Yep. Good kick by him. He's adjust if you notice his last fights, he's adjusted this area right here. He's not as long no more, but he's still right there. And these guys don't know how to kick him. You know, unnecessary for him. You shouldn't be doing that. This dude's just playing the game. By the way, did I tell you guys how cute he looks with this uh with this pink hair? You guys think that's weird? Nice. Tinkerbell. Yep, rangy. Pedro's not doing anything. How are you gonna let this dude kind of keep that? I don't even think that thing went in. I really don't. I, I re can you rewind that real quick? I don't even think that thing. I don't even think that thing went in. Go ahead, hit the play button. 
No way. It didn't even go in, guys. That's crazy, man. But even if it does go in, you still... You, st you guys have no idea how many times I fought. You know, let me bring this up again right here. You know, with the freaking... You know, with the tearing the ligament, pulling the bone out, and still fighting. And Marlon Marais and coming out with the victory, winning my second belt. Like, there's certain things that fighters just, okay, man, it happens. You know, now, if that finger went all the way in, and you don't see anything, like, that's crazy. But from what I saw right there, I don't know. I'm not sure if Pedro really wanted to uh, continue the fight. And here we have none other than Peter Jan versus Uriah Faber. This is the fight that I really want to start off with because I feel like this is the fight where Peter was able to really showcase his real talent. You know, the Jimmy Rivera fight, a lot of these other fights, like, you know, He's just a tough, tough Russian, but I think with Uriah Faber, you know, he showed a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, I guess, prominence. You, see, you notice what he does? You run that real quick. Rewind it. Yeah. Look at how he changes stance. He'll hit you with the right or, or left, and he'll eventually cover space according to that. Watch again. He throws his jab, but steps in with that right hand as he does that. And then comes back in with that with that left hand. Boom, steps in, and then finishes off with that one. You see what I mean? It's almost, it's a, it's a walking motion. Boom, boom, and then comes, comes back with the other one. As his feet are in transition. Uriah's distance is off, dude. He's, he's he's out of position, he's here, he moves too much. Ooh, good elbow. That's where you gotta be careful with Peter. Boom, off the clinch, very subtle. Bah. You know, dude, his, his hands are always up, but look at how he can walk into things too. And your eye's not capitalizing it. And this is your after X amount of retirement being retired. Yeah, good. Catches the clinch. Knee taps some releases and just throws a kick. But if you notice, it wasn't even a knee. It was his actual foot. Watch. Knee bumped him, created space, and just said, screw it. I'm gonna throw that. I'm gonna throw that uh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kick. Watch. It wasn't, it was nothing spectacular. It literally was behind, it was right by the ear, but it was his nasty foot that eventually ended up landing on Uriah Faber. Bah, once again. The problem is with Uriah too is he, uh, he got hit with the foot, but he really oversold it, whatever. Like when your hands flow like that, like the, the referee's job is to protect you. And uh, you know, caught him with the foot. And here we have Peter Young versus Corey Sanhagen. I thought this was a good, uh, I thought this was a really good fight because especially now the fact that he's gonna end up fighting uh, Sean O'Malley is same height, but Sean O'Malley does have a two inch reach advantage. This man right here is very unpredictable with the strikes, with his techniques. But as you notice in this fight, Peter Young started to kind of pick up the pace, kind of gives up the first two to eventually start investing in the later rounds. Yeah, I'm catching him. Oop. Catching him down the middle. Kicking him. Yeah. The momentum of Corey. And this is round one, too. Like shooting with his head down, but still being able to get to the leg. Head down, butt up. No good. You know, catch him to the body. Boom. Nothing really, nothing really dramatic there. Boom, hook. And then he ended up missing the elbow. But it just told you, you gotta keep your hands up the whole time. Good job by, good job by Cora. Yep, again. Head down, ass up, but ironically, he's getting to the legs, which says a lot. Which says that this man, you know, he, he this is the one thing that he does do well. His hands are always up, but he does a little too much, which he leaves his legs behind right here. 
Yeah, notice notice how he's notice this is the third round here notice 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 how the pace is pushed different now with a beautiful jab boom right hand yeah right hand left hook and he'll switch hands he'll switch stance as he does it look boom boom nice he went left step through to eventually throw that elbow and then miss the elbow to eventually catch that hook Missed it, or he hit him, I'm sorry. And then he just threw it. So it's, it's a pretty tricky thing. Boom, and then Lotus's his feet. His feet come with him as he goes. And there's a step through, and it's finishing there. Boom. He'll bait you, man. He'll smoke a lot of the stuff to catch you with the bigger punch. You know, he, and he does a good job of smoking his hands to bring his legs in. But notice, man, notice this is round four here. Notice how much he's covering distance now. Where Corey is just like kind of mind boggled a little bit. Getting him go backwards, yeah. Step through, stepping through. He'll, he'll throw the jab, come out with the right hand to eventually throw that left hand again. Look, he's doing it. Yeah, pushing the pace, this is the fifth round. The pace, the, this, is, this is exactly how, more like he's in a fight, Sean O'Malley, you know? Yeah. Nice, again, caught, caught it with the foot, but it was three rounds to two, Piotr Jan. You know, I, I, th I think thinking about this whole fight with Corey, if Corey was able to take this dude down, it was a completely different fight. You know, if he really had a uh, better top game and top control. But, uh, you know, without further ado, I'd like to maybe, uh, now let's now let's dissect Peter Jan versus Al Jashitstein Sterling. What do you guys think? You know, I think this fight was interesting because this is, this is a fight that this man right here deserved an Academy Award. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I know how to draw that thing. But anyways, he had an Academy Award for his first performance, but at the end of the day, he did the right thing. He did the right thing to have another chance to take another crack at the guy who had illegally need him. You know, 32, 29, they're pretty much the same height. You know, this guy has a, a half an inch reach advantage. Yep, sticking into the body. He's shooting with his head down and still being able to get to Get to Peter Jan. Yo, again, again, yo, taking him down right away, right away, sinking in those legs. And can you rewind that real quick? Notice, notice, notice a good job that Aljamain does do. Rewind it. One more time. Right there. Boom. And I want you to see how fast his transition of getting his legs, it, they're already in position. Boom. They're already, that, that, they're already both in. You know what I'm saying? He's beating him to the punch. He beat uh, Peter Jan to the punch. And now he's looking. Boom. Fake that right hand or through that right hand to eventually catch him over. He went to his back, slid that leg in. Now he's in good position. Yep. Now, now he took his back. Now he took Peter's back and this is not, this is not good for him. There's a lot, that's a lot of time too. You know, hammering down, hammering down those things. You know, if this, if this dude could really defend takedowns, he'd be super dangerous. The problem is, is, uh, yeah, he'll always come aggressive. This is the third round and he's pushing the pace against a wrestler, but you push a pace with a good wrestler, you know, you're always going to be acceptable to, you're always going to be, uh, there's going to be opportunities to take downs. You know, on his, on his leg again, get him catching forward. You see what I'm saying? His pressure against wrestlers is a gold mine. Oh, got, got both legs in right away. You know, took him down, grabbed the other leg, took him off, and this dude's going to turn in. Yep, take down, because he, he, his hands are always at, rewind that real quick. Look, 
His hands are always, he's always here. You see what I'm saying? One more time. This right here is gonna get Peter in trouble, especially against a guy like me. Cause I'll be looking for that thing the whole time. You know, yeah, good defense, but this is MMA, buddy. You're also gonna get, if you're gonna do that, you better be really far. I am literally like licking my fingers, Jesus, to see the opportunities on how much the opportunities that I have against a guy like Peter Young. These are the deficiencies that he has because he's so good on his feet. He's so good on his feet that, you know, he's neglected all those other areas that he really needs help on. You know, a guy like Marab would be a tough fight. Any guy that has good solid wrestling that will just stick to that tenacity of wrestling, Peter Young would be in trouble. Especially if he could take the back. You can just win, you don't, have, you don't necessarily have to beat up Peter Young. You can just beat Peter Young by just straight up controlling him. Okay, so now I would like to kind of bring you guys up here is what I call the three T's. The technique, the tactics, and the threshold. This is this is Sean O'Malley versus Peter Yan. So I do believe uh, Peter Yan is the favorite. So I kind of want to dissect uh, Crush the Clown, Sean O'Malley first. So I think his techniques, what he needs to really brush up on, even though we're we're literally a couple weeks away, is his techniques. Number one is his position. I might not even write after this guy because I'm getting a bunch of shit from you guys. So, number one is his position. I think he really needs to dissect that. Um, you know what I mean? Because uh, if he leads, if he leaves his leg out there that far, Peter's going to chew that thing out. Number two, his tactics. You're not going to be able to strike with a guy like Peter Young because I guarantee you his game plan is to really push the pace against you and really push the pace with you hard since the beginning because Peter knows that he's a he's a duration fighter as a fight gets going even further he gets better and better so Sean O'Smelly you're gonna have to I hope I hope tactically I hope tactically you have a good game plan because it's not just gonna be here because right now you're going up against the number one contender in the world so you're gonna have to really this is the most important piece to me right here for Sean are the tactics. How is it that you're going to fight somebody that's known for his striking, that can change stance, that can push the pace, that's going to be here to you? You know, you got takedowns. Your jiu-jitsu is better than his, I do believe. You know, training with Tanquinho for, for so many years. You know, so... And then the last one is the threshold. You know, Sean, do you have the threshold? And actually, honestly, even on the threshold, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add grit here. Did you train to get your body beat up? That where somebody, where people are kicking you and hitting you? Because it's not just about sparring, but you being able to take that pain. Are you in good shape to go with a guy like that? Is your body gonna withstand certain things that Pyrion's gonna bring to the table for you? You know, those are the biggest things that I have. So the one that worries me the most is this one right here for him. It really does, you know? I, I do believe the one that he could really make adjustments is the technique. I think the tactics is where he can more likely win the fight, but the threshold, can Sean O'Malley take the pain? He can give it, but can he take that pain? This dude's gonna come out firing for you. So those are my, tech, those are my takes for Sean O'Malley on the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. You guys, thank you guys for watching Fight Feedback. I am your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And we will deliver. And we are out! So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember, there's more breakdown, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out!